members for the past 44 years. God has graced me with the opportunity to lead this church and I can stand before you today declaring that he has done great things in my life. And through this church, as I reflect back over all that's been accomplished and achieved, I am grateful. I've had the privilege of standing on the shoulders of my grandfather and father to lead this church forward and I think I've done them proud. I've accomplished just about everything I set out to accomplish. And with that being said, there's just one more thing left to do. So effective today, I am retiring. Now, my last official Sunday as pastor will be Easter Sunday, March the 31st. But between now and then, I've asked my son to step in as interim pastor to preach and handle the operations of the church. We stepped into the seat of leadership in our early 20s, the season of spring, full of new beginnings and of new possibilities. And here we are now in our early 70s, the season of fall, a time of transition and of change. You've loved and supported us in so many ways for which we are eternally thankful and appreciative. Now you'll still see us at church and events, but the time has come for us to reconnect Enjoy what life has to offer and wait on God's next plan for our lives. It is our prayer, hope, and desire that you will continue to be a supportive pillar of this great church, New Covenant, and the work God has designed for it. Change is a mindset. If you can surrender to it, trust the process, and believe, then you can sit in the knowledge as stated in Jeremiah 29, 11, which states, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. To our Cub family, we thank you, we love you, be blessed.
the Lord. Well, he does. Nobody but me. and go what is he going outside the door he was supposed to pray Lord have mercy mm -hmm. I guess I'll be praying for myself let's look to the Lord in prayer our Father and our God we thank you we thank you for this day and we give you all of the glory, all of the praise. We thank you for what you have done, what you're doing right now. Some who need you in a special way, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. And we give you the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in two. We ask you now, if you would give us what we need to give you all of the glory. And we say thank you. Thank you again as we look and as we do your will in this worship. We say thank you and glory even right now. And we say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord said uh, amen and uh, amen come on can we sing that song members got wet when you were coming to church. <laughs> Amen. All right, how many of you made it to the church this morning? There we go, there we go. Thank you. How many of you are not members of the church? Thank you for being here today. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, members. Let's greet everybody here this morning. We are so glad you to
recognize that God is a very present help it postures us to recognize that we've got no reason to fear when we look back over the track record of God's presence and power in our life we've got the testimony that we've got no reason to fear when we look at what God has done in our lives we ought to be able to shout and touch a neighbor on the shoulder and tell him you've got no reason to fear he's all we need to make it to where God is pushing us to go. Now we celebrate and honor the presence and the power of God in all of our lives. He's been good to somebody. He's done great things in somebody's life. And I believe I got about 10, 15 that came today just to say thank you. When you recognize that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, we gotta move, we gotta keep going. We celebrate and honor God today in this place. It's another day he's blessed us. It's another day he's kept us. Come on, let's celebrate God. We honor him today. We thank you for your presence in this place and even those that are in the digital space. Can we celebrate and holler and shout out at everybody that's tuned in all over the globe that's participating in our worship experience. Thank you so much. You had a lot of other streams that you could have tapped into today, but you came to New Covenant, and we're excited that you're dead. You know what I need you to do. Be a digital disciple, electronic evangelist, smash the share button, invite somebody into this worship experience today, because here's the thing. If y'all getting something out of it, somebody else that you're connected to might need to hear what's happening in this place today so that their life is changed, challenged, and they leave from the experience charged. And so we thank you in advance for how you're going to get the word out that worship is going forth here at the Cuff. As you plug in, Kate, good to see you, man. Kate was texting me, Stephen, when are you going to get to the mic? I'm here now, Kate. Thank you so much. As a three-year-old who's excited about being in church, I celebrate the young people that are excited even in the digital space about plugging in. It's a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be free. It's a good day to be black. We honor and celebrate the God for that. Can we celebrate our senior pastor today? Back with us. We appreciate what God is doing in his life. And listen, those of you who are tuned in, I know you typically check out at a certain point. The message is over and you don't do that today. Uh, we've got a special announcement. My parents want to share something with us today. And I need everybody to be plugged in so that you can get it firsthand. And we'll share that with you at the end of the worship. They'll come to you and share some things that are on their heart. Well, today we've got a special guest with us, a super special guest with us. If you recall during COVID period when we were shut down and locked out and all we could do was stream, we had the opportunity to bring in some guests to share with us in the preaching moment. And one of the best gifts that God has placed on this preaching planet is here to share with us today all the way from New York. New York is in the house today. Pastor Tisha Dixon Williams, pastor of the First Baptist Church, Bridge Hampton, New York. And somebody's saying, where is Bridge Hampton? Y'all heard of the Hamptons? Where the rich folk hang out? That's where she pastors. Yeah, they got black people there. And so she has come in today to share with us. And we're excited 
about what God is doing with her and in her. She's a rising star in the preaching community, well sought after, and she has found favor with senior pastor and I and this church, and she's graced us today uh, to break unto us the bread of life. So I know there's going to be some praying in the pews so that some preaching can go forth from the pulpit. Let, let me set the stage for you and for her if you've come equipped with your own personal copy of the kingdom's constitution. Two texts that she asked me to lift for us today in preparation for the preaching moment. There in Psalms, chapter, uh, Psalms 30, verse number 5, Psalm 30, verse number 5, we find these words reading from the NIV. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Here it is, weeping may stay for the night, but we're going to turn up. We're going to celebrate. We're going to lift our voice because rejoicing comes in the morning. Then John chapter 16, verse 33, text reads as thus, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Pastor Tisha Dixon Williams. I finally made it. New Covenant Baptist Church, is it? Chicago, Illinois. Oh, good to be with you all today, Pastor. Good to see you again. Thurston II, good to see you. My friend Tish has lots of good things to say about you. Huh? Lady J, good to see you again. As a matter of fact, I recognize so many of you. I'm sorry. You see, I make a lot of rounds and it wouldn't do for me to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I have a way of kind of just showing up. Sorry about that. But I'm certainly glad to be here. So happy you all survived COVID and everything that we set in your path. You don't look like what you've been through. Some of you look really confused. You gonna act like you don't know me? I mean, I'm gonna rip y'all out of the plastic. Some of y'all are acting brand new in here today. Come on, y'all know me. Some of you are more familiar with me than others. But let's face it, some of you know me all too well. So don't get brand new on me now. I'm sorry, that was rude. Maybe you don't know me like that. I've been known to escalate quickly from time to time. Listen to me just rambling on. Uh, sorry about that. Allow me to introduce myself. I go by many names. There's weeping, sorrow, pain, stress, struggles, bother, fear, mayhem, issues, dilemmas, problems, setbacks, mess, hot mess, difficulties, trials and tribulations, two of my personal favorites, confusion, pandemic, protest, and as of late, pandemonium but you can call me trouble. You know what they say, you're either in trouble, just got out of trouble, or you're on your way back in. Oh, I see you know who I am now. And so here I am, trouble at your service. Some of you are still a little iffy, so let me help you out. I am that stack of overdue bills on your kitchen table. I'm the eviction notice taped to your front door. I'm that bottle you swore you'd never pick up again. I'm the breakup and the divorce you didn't see coming. I'm that one bad decision on one bad night. I'm the person on your job that gets on your last nerve. I'm that woman you should have never gave your number to. I'm that man you should have never smiled at. I am the layoff you never thought was coming. I am the unexpected diagnosis. I'm the crazy psychosis. I'm the bully that that keeps picking on your kid at school. I'm the heartbreak you just can't get over. I'm the bill collector whose calls you avoid every day. I'm the upsetting thoughts that you wrestle with. I'm the worry that keeps you up at night and I'm the secret shame you pray never comes to light. <laughs> ah, you know who I am now. Now that I have your attention, and since we're all acquainted, let's make the most of it, shall we? Let me tell you a little bit about myself. The name's Trouble comes from the Latin word turbulare, which comes from turbulence. Have you ever flown on a plane? You know what turbulence is. Turbulence is when the airplane is flying smoothly, but suddenly it feels like it's driving on a rough road or it rolls from side to side or bounces up and down. 
Well, that's exactly what I do. When you think you're going through life smoothly, I come in to shake things up a little bit, make your life a little bumpy. And as the definition suggests, it's my job to shake things up a bit. Now, let's see, I've been around a very long time. I've been up to heaven, yep, even heaven. But one day there was an uprising over the way the place was being run. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know rebellion was frowned upon in that place, and so some of us got kicked out, but that's neither here nor there. If I had to guess, I'd say one of my first assignments must have been in the Garden of Eden. Oh, I stirred up some real drama there. And I've been doing well for myself ever since. You see, there's not a person or a place that I have not encountered, or better yet, who has not encountered me. I even spent 40 days in the desert with Jesus once. But I'll talk more about that a little later. It was sporadic, and I didn't do as much damage as I'd hope. But the point is, if I can accost him and I can go to heaven, do you think I would think twice about any of you? And let's be real. For some of you, I am a constant companion. See, that's something you have to know about me. I am inevitable. In this life, you will have trouble. <laughs> no matter who you are, I'll get around to you eventually, like now. It's terribly rude of me to show up unannounced when you were expecting Dr. Thurston. <laughs> but that's what I do. I don't warn you, I don't call ahead, I simply show up and you've got to decide what to do with me. Just when you think that life is going smoothly, here comes trouble. Take, for example, this one time I was hanging with David. What am I saying one time? David and I kicked it a lot. I spent most of his life with him, especially after he was anointed. Ask him about that lady Bathsheba one time. Good story. The strangest thing is, I can't recall too much of a history with him before he was anointed. Oh, but after he was anointed, Seemed like I couldn't get away from him no matter how much I tried. I followed him everywhere. The pasture, the palace. We even hung out in a field for a few days. Those were some of our best times. But hands down, the best time we ever had had to be in that cave. Ooh, good times, good times. Well, there was one time after David had a string of military successes, life was going great. I mean, he was winning every battle. But that's when David's pride got the best of him. You see, he got the big head and decided he would take a census of the people in Israel in order to glorify himself. And his general, a guy named Joab, warned him not to do it, but he didn't listen. You see, that's when I stepped in and pushed him along. Oh, did I happen to mention sometimes you bring me on yourself? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, God was not happy with that at all. Yeah, that seems to happen when you disobey God. It tends to make him angry. But David's not the only one. If you ever meet a guy named Jonah, ask him about Nineveh, and that time he ended up in a well. Ooh, we still laugh about that one. Well, to discipline David, God gave him a choice of three punishments, three years of famine, three months of being overcome by his enemy, or three days of pandemic. And David chose the pandemic. But halfway through, in true God fashion, he lifted the pandemic and I had to move on. Funny, I didn't last too long in your recent one either. Anywho, this trouble that David found himself in inspired him to write Psalm 30, one of the most comforting psalms in the Bible. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, quiet as it's kept, one of the things I've always loved about David was his tenacity. No matter how much I was with him, no matter how much I stuck around, he managed to have a song in his heart. As a matter of fact, some of his greatest hits were inspired by me. Psalm 30 is just one of them. Now, don't get me wrong, I inspired them, but they were written for the glory of God. And let me be clear, David wasn't always happy with God. Every day wasn't a cakewalk. He was extremely flawed, and yet he constantly sought God in everything he did, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It was one of his most admirable qualities, and he did it almost more than any other person I've ever spent time with. Whenever David faced a trial, especially with me, he always asked to know God's will, to know better, to be better, and to do better. And flawed in all, that's how he earned the distinguished honor of being called a man after God's own heart. And when he got up singing and praising and carrying on, I had to go. 
See, I just can't stand being around all that thing you call worship. It gives me a headache. And let's face it, some of you are no American idols. So when y'all get to singing, I really got to be out. But it's interesting because no matter how bad it is, it's still a sweet sound to God's ears. And if you want to get me out of your hair, I suggest you do what David did because I'm not meant to stick around for long. It's true, I am inevitable, but I'm also temporary. I think your singer Timothy Wright said it best, trouble don't last always. That's why David said may endure for the night and not must. Yeah, it's conditional. It all depends on you. That's right. How long I stay depends on you. You see, it's your attitude while I'm around that dictates how long I will stay. You will have trouble. You may not have a say in when I come, but you do get to decide how to deal with me. I am inevitable, but misery is a choice. You see, David had some history with God when it came to me which molded his attitude. So David never focused on what I put him through, but rather he focused on what God brought him through. And so it's simple. Here's the formula. Focus on me and I'll stay. Focus on God and I got to go. Although I am a bit of a ham, so your attention is greatly appreciated because when your attention is on me, I am greater than I should be and tougher to get rid of because then I am out of control and can do whatever I want to do. Oh, but that David, he knew how to keep me in check. He never let me get too far out of hand. He always had the best attitude no matter what I did to him. He didn't try to avoid me, but rather praise God in my face because he realized something. The more he glorified God, the less he worked worried about me. Somehow, David found it easy to turn a negative circumstance into a reason to give God praise and adoration. And once he started lifting the name of the Lord, no way I could stick around. See, that's when I move out and joy moves in. Good old joy. Yeah, we've been working together a long time. Oh, some of you are surprised to hear that, huh? Yeah, quiet as it's kept, we're a package deal. You see, you don't get her without me. Why? Because you'll never appreciate joy if I don't come first. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, no offense. I know you guys don't particularly like me, and that's okay. Everybody loves joy. Joy lights up a room. I get it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Rejoicing again. I, yeah, I get it. Everybody loves joy. Oh, but a word of caution, never confuse joy with happiness. Yes, yeah, she doesn't like it. Why? Because even salt and sugar look the same. Because happiness is fleeting and feels a lot like joy, but it's really a sad imposter. Happiness is not hard to fake. Even I've been known to disguise myself as happiness from time to time when I was trouble all along. You see, happiness is determined by what happens, but joy is like a pilot light in a stove. It stays lit no matter what. And I know I'm not as popular as joy is. Seriously, who loves trouble? I mean, nobody prays for trouble. Nobody sits down and says, Lord, give me more trouble. But everybody prays for joy. No one likes me, but understand this, I am necessary. Why? Because I'm what makes joy so great. Okay, so think of life as a party. If joy is the celebration, then I'm the setup. You see, most people don't like the setup for the party, but everyone loves the celebration but it's the setup that makes the party a success. And that's how it is for you. The better you're set up, the better the celebration. I think I need to say that one more time. The better you're set up, the better the celebration. Going through things with me is what makes you appreciate it. I am the setup for your celebration. I'm reminded of an episode of The Twilight Zone about a gambler who dies and goes on to the afterlife where he continually wins and wins and wins until he gets bored out of his mind from perpetually hitting the jackpot. And he was bored because there was no challenge and he no longer appreciated the win because there was no struggle. And that's how life would be for you. Without me, you'd never appreciate the win. Remember, sometimes failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. And don't tell I told you so. But at times, I may even be better for you than joy. 
Because when you spend time with me, you're tested, you're tried, but more importantly, you grow. I've watched some of the best people get better after spending time with me. Moses, Jacob, Job, Mary Magdalene, the disciples, Paul, the list goes on and on. And so if you can, try not to look at me as the enemy of joy. Do what that guy James said and ah, count it all joy. Because the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Listen to me giving away all my trade secrets. Most of you won't take my advice anyway, and I'll just end up sticking around longer than I should. And I must admit, some of you make me feel so at home. You make it hard for me to want to move on. Not to mention, the longer you let me stay, the more friends I invite to come with me. And before you know it, we are having a pity party. Uh, let's see who's on the guest list. First, there's doubt, although I'm not too sure about him. There's misery. You got to have misery because she loves company. And then there's worry. And then worry always invites anxiety, but that guy makes me nervous. Then there's depression, and he's a real downer. And then there's anger. Once he gets started, ooh, you got a hard time controlling him. And then there's guilt and shame. Shame. Now be especially careful about inviting these two because when all the other feelings have cleared out, these two have a tendency to linger. And most times guilt and shame are the last to leave the pity party. Oh, but here's a tip. If you really need help getting rid of guilt and shame, just call Grace and Mercy. They'll take care of them right away. So here it is. If you don't want all of us hanging around in your life, in your home, on your job, and even in your church, not this church, of course, no matter what I do, no matter what I throw your way, stay focused on God. Because sometimes I can be a bit much, and you don't have the power to handle me all on your own, but God has all power. And I can say this confidently because we've had our run-ins in the past. And every time I thought I had the upper hand, Lady J, somehow God turned everything around. And I began to realize that whatever I messed up, God was there to fix up. I remember the children of Israel. At, by the at that time, I went by the name Pharaoh. I had them right where I wanted them, wall all around them, and me on their track. But out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. I remember the three Hebrew boys. At the time, I went by the name Nebuchadnezzar. I put them in the fiery furnace and turned the heat up seven times, Deacon Callahan. I was dancing a jig, confident in my victory, when suddenly I realized there was somebody in there who wasn't there before. For God was protecting them. God protects those he loves and keeps them out of trouble. There isn't any plan that I've placed in your life that God has not countered. That's why he said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Don't you see? That's why the gun didn't go off. That's why you stepped back from the curb just in time. That's why the cancer is in remission. That's why you still have a job. That's why they won't take your house. That's why you didn't go to jail. That's why you're sober today. That's why you still have a bright future ahead of you because God God has a way of protecting God's people. Don't you know today that God is an ever-present help in the time of? And as if God wasn't bad enough, he turned around and sent his son, Jesus. Whew, Jesus, his only begotten son, who he sent to redeem all of you. And he didn't do it because you loved him so much. Believe me, I know. He did it because he loved you so much. Ooh, but I tell you that Jesus makes my teeth itch. Because even I know there's something about the name of Jesus. Because at the mere mention of Jesus, I begin to tremble. You see, ever since our face-off in the desert, he's the one person I could never get the best of. And no matter how hard I tried, ooh, and believe me, I tried, I could never bring him down. You see, you may be no match for me, but I'm no match for Jesus. Just when I think I have you in a place of despair, he shows up and gives you hope. I say you're a sinner, he says you're forgiven. I say you're weak, he says my power is made perfect in weakness. I say no way, he says I am the way. I said 
let it be dark. He says, I am the light. I say it'll never happen. He says, ask and it'll be given to you. I say impossible. He says, with me, all things are possible. I say fear. He says, fear not. I close the door. He said, knock, and it shall be open. I say you're lost. He says, I've lost none. I say you're bound. He says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I say you're dead. He says, yet shall you live. I say overcome. He says, I've already overcome the world. I may be no match for you, but Jesus kills me every time. So take it from me when you've got Jesus, you don't have to worry about me. I know his power. I've seen what he can do. And while I might be trouble for you, Jesus is trouble for me. And he's been making trouble for me for a long time. I remember when I had the woman with the issue of blood. At that time, my name was Sickness. We'd been together for 12 long years. But when I heard she pushed her way through a crowd and Jesus was passing by, I said to myself, oh no, here comes trouble. Once there was a little girl in my clutches. Back then, folks called me mourning. She was on her deathbed, but her daddy went to find Jesus. When I saw his disciples clear the room, I said, doggone it, here comes trouble. I remember blind Bartimaeus. At that time, my alias was affliction. When I heard him say, thou son of David, have mercy on me, I said to myself, oh no, here comes trouble. On one time, the disciples were on a ship. They were rocking to and fro. I was doing my turbulence thing, but then they went down deck and saw Jesus sleeping on a silly posture They woke him up and I said, here we go again. Here comes trouble. I remember his friend Lazarus came in the form of death. I held him in a tomb for four days, but when I heard that Mary and Martha had sent for Jesus, I said to myself, here comes trouble. When he made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem with people laying palms at his feet while everyone else was shouting Hosanna, I was shouting here comes trouble. Ooh, but then one day, one day it finally happened. I hooked up with his friend Judas, Pilate, the high priest, and all the others. I finally had him where I wanted him, arrested and sentenced to, sentenced to death on trumped up charges. Ooh, we beat him all night long, took him from trial to trial and court to court, had him hanging on the cross all day. Ooh, we had him, I tell you. They took him down, laid him in a borrowed tomb, and we sealed the door. 33 years, after 33 years, I finally had that guy Jesus where I wanted him. Me, death, and the grave surrounding him. We secured him for a couple of days. Oh, but then suddenly, something started to happen on that third day morning. Jesus began to stir. I called death. I said, death, what's going on? He said, I don't know, but I've lost my sting. I called to the grave and he said, my grip is slipping. I've lost my holding power. And before we knew it, Jesus got up with all power in his hands and the stone rolled away and all say to myself was here comes trouble. I, I think I've worn out my welcome y'all. I can feel joy is on the way. Somebody has got their shout. The joy that the world didn't give from you and the joy that the world can't take away. I'm making my exit now because joy is in the building. Somebody say amen. Somebody ought to celebrate. Joy is here. Can we bless God for Pastor Tisha Dixon Williams? My, my, my. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the word that you've deposited into our hearts and our spirits today. God, we thank you for trouble. Thank you for helping us to take a new perspective on the trouble that we face in our life. Thank you for trouble being the setup to the celebration. God, we've been dealing with some trouble this past week, this past month, over the course of this year, and we've reframed it now. Thank you for the setup for what you're planning and plotting to do in our lives to take us from where we are to where you want us to be. Now, we pray now that you would pour back into Pastor Dixon Williams. Pour back into her as she has poured out to us today. Continue to elevate her and expand her territory. Allow the unique gift that you've blessed her with to touch lives across this nation. 
God, it's our prayer now that if there be one here in this place or even in the virtual space that doesn't have a relationship with you, that doesn't know you in their heart, that's never invited you in, that they would make a conscious decision today to partner with you to move forward in life as you being the Lord of their life. But God, even if there's one that's connected with you but hasn't connected to a church family and they feel that this is the right place for them, allow them to make a decision today. That's our prayer. That's our hope. That's our desire that a life is changed because you gave us a life-changing word. God, speak to someone's heart now is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Listen, you've heard the word today, and we pray that it's penetrated your heart. And maybe you've been dealing with some trouble in life, and you didn't quite know how to navigate it. Well, you've been given some insight and some instruction today. It's in partnership with God. And you'll be able to navigate the course of your life in spite of the hurdles, the obstacles, the pitfalls, and the potholes that are worse than Chicago potholes. God will still guide you. God will still lead you to your ultimate destiny. And if you want to make a decision today, we want to extend that opportunity for you to make a public declaration that I want to invite Christ into my life. And here's the great news. It doesn't matter how messed up life has been for you, how bad you think you are. God still has need of you. God still loves you and cares about you. Or maybe you need to connect with the church. And if our, our vibe here connects with your vibe and you want to be a part of this tribe, you want New Covenant to be your church home, you want to connect to some other people who may have been where you are now, but God has transitioned their life, and you need somebody to hold your hand and walk you to where God is leading you, we would love to connect with you, be in relationship with you, and do life with you. So on the count of three, if you need to accept Christ, I want to invite you down to this altar. On the count of three, if you want to make New Covenant your church home, I want to invite you down to this altar. One, two, three. Thank you for viewing our worship service today. You can join us each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. right here in the sanctuary or on any of our streaming platform sites, Facebook, YouTube, or our church website. You can also view our services each Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. on Chicago Cable Channel 25. Like, share, subscribe, and join our movement. If this ministry has impacted your life in any way, we ask that you consider becoming a financial partner by giving via the Giveify app. You may also give via our church website, www.newcovenantnbc.com. By mailing your donation to P.O. Box 198-217, Chicago, Illinois, 60619, or by bringing your contribution to the church office at 754 East 77th Street. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We love you, we are praying for you, and we'll see you next week. Be blessed.